Welcome to Raw Talk. I almost said Smack Talk because Jey Uso is wearing all blue. Get it? Blue, Smackdown, Red, Raw. Anyways, link down below as always. I know I didn't do 2K23 videos yet. Not that there's a thousand people waiting for me in great anticipation for me to release one of those. It's just been really wild uh, just in general. And I've been busy kind of playing Ark, a couple of other games. And I've been taking a small break from YouTube I've barely done anything in about a week on my main channel, and I excuse me, normally upload several times a day, seven days a week, think, research, everything, 18 hours a day. It's a crazy grind, and I've been doing it now for a little over half a decade, and I've never taken like a day off, let alone like a week. I feel like mentally that feels good, just not a, a lot of gaming, just not like a lot of gaming with like recording. Not everything always has to be about YouTube. But anyhow, that's why I've been uh, quote-unquote absent with 2K23. So this this was a good show. I had a lot of fun just in general. Jey Uso came out and he slipped when he got onto the apron. I just thought I'd mention that because he quickly recovered and it reminded me of Titus O'Neil when he went sliding underneath the ring in Saudi Arabia. Chats on the mic, talks about being excited for CM Punk. Uh... He says that we lost Sammy. Was he injured to Drew? I'm not I'm not too sure, like story wise, right? I don't think he's actually like really injured. Then McIntyre came out on the mat on the match. Came out on the mic before their match, because they fought each other, which was a great match. What I didn't really understand was the whole thing with Michael Cole always going on about Drew's delusional. When you really think about it hard, everything that Drew McIntyre is doing is actually something you don't see too often. Yes, he's attacking a lot of the baby faces on the roster, but they're all people that have crossed him or talked crap about his family. I still feel like he's an in-between heel and a face. He just wants revenge. And then he asked the crowd, if somebody hurt your family, somebody hurt your kids, whatever, your wife, your sister, your aunts, uncles, cousins, would you not want revenge? And everybody's like, well, yeah. And a guy out in the crowd, because uh, Drew was like, raise your hand if, if you agree with that. One guy didn't. He goes, you see, he's a coward. A ca Anyways, I can't do his accent, but you get the idea. So that whole dynamic again is really interesting for me with his character, because I still feel like he's not technically um, a heel, really. If Jay, as much as I love Jay Uso, had he done to me... Like what he did to Kevin Owens and the likes of a lot of other people. I don't know. I might have wanted a little bit of revenge and then been like, okay, now we're even. Let's get past this. I'm just saying. So, but yeah, all in all, I love the match. It was just, I like the match. So that's the weird thing with my recaps is oftentimes I don't actually talk too much about the actual match itself. Oh, there was a power bomb here. There was a suplex there. Then he put him through the table. I'm not going to do that. It's the story behind it, the drama, the scripted drama that I really like to get into, which racks up the minutes for the videos that I upload on the channel. The match is the match. Like I said, I'm not going to call it like Michael Cole did. you probably already seen Monday Night Raw. This is just for whatever oddball reason somebody would want to watch me talk about my perspective and my thoughts on the matter of what you saw the night before. Then we had backstage moment. Yeet. No comment there from the peanut gallery. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Don't even say it. <laughs> Jey Uso. <laughs> okay. Backstage, Judgment Day, we're angry with JD McNugget a little bit, and... Dom lost his title. Rhea was yelling at Damien. If you're going to call yourself a boss, start, start, um, you know, a acting like one. And, uh, then Damien is like, no, that's not what Damien said. Damien didn't really say much. He was just grumpy as always. And then we also had backstage Alpha Academy with the Creed brothers chatting with our truth who shows up. With some Christmas lights wanting to decorate for the, the Judgment Day. And as always, that whole R-Truth dynamic backstage is some of the areas where I get some of the most entertainment. 
It's not always in the ring. Sometimes it's out of the ring. And it's just, it's great. Then we had Rhea. Ripley versus Maxine Dupuis. Very one-sided, of course. Rhea won. Great match. I still uh, commend uh, Maxine for, you know, for trying. Right? So let's uh, move on from that. Uh, uh, CM Punk. Hell Froze Over t-shirt. Love that. So backstage, Adam Pierce had a quick uh, moment with CM Punk in the room. They were going to chat quickly, and then immediately after, he had um, Adam Pierce show up in the ring, calling out CM Punk to come out to decide if he wanted to make his decision. CM Punk uh, debuted in WWE with Mickey James, actually in Cleveland, Ohio. Funny enough, almost a decade later, or no, not a decade later, Decades later, he would leave in Cleveland, Ohio. He was told on his debut that he was probably going to go to OVW because he didn't quite have what he took or, or just something that happened there. You probably watched the interview. You can watch it right here if you click on the link. So a lot has to do with Cleveland, Ohio. I hope it's Cleveland, Ohio. I hope I didn't have a Hulk Hogan moment. So it, it's a, a very significant place for him. And he chose to be on Raw, which makes sense because we just got Randy Orton back and CM Punk. And those are like two juggernauts in the business. And I'm like, you can't have the two of them just go to the same show. So for me, it was kind of obvious. I, I And I'm glad that they both didn't go to Raw. I'm glad that, that SmackDown got Randy Orton. And then Seth came out, you know, saying that he hates CM Punk. Don't call this your home. You abandoned everybody. You tried to bring down the business. And it's true. Whatever. And again, I really enjoy that. Again, I keep using the word dynamic. I keep talking about the, the the baby faces and the heels. Seth, CM Punk, two huge faces. But yet, they hate each other. They're after each other. And again, I love that. Just like the whole Bronson Reed is a heel. Ivar is a heel. But yet, they're after each other. It's not always good guy versus bad guy bullshit. So the more I see some of this stuff, the more I'm just lapping it up and I'm really, really enjoying it. And CM Punk, it is official. I think it was official before, but now it's even more official. It's going to be in the Rumble. And then backstage, speaking of Ivar, we had a little vignette moment there. And then Bronson Reed talking. It's not bad on the mic. I like the whole Viking thing. Like I said, Ivar man moves around and Bronson is just absolutely crazy. I thought it was a great match. These men can really move around despite their physical appearance. You cannot judge them by that because they will do shit that 160, 180 pound people in great shape can't do. Uh, so kudos to them for that. And then, like I said, Bronson won. Well, I didn't say it. I'm saying it now. Bronson won with a superplex off the top rope. That was quite devastating. And when you weigh that much and you have that much more weight coming down on your neck, if you land... In an awkward position, it can, it can be deadly. Just think about the sweating. You're a big behemoth. You're on the top ropes. You do a little slip. Shit can happen, but man, they, they figured it out. And then backstage was really cool because CM Punk ran into Judgment Day really quick. And CM Punk being the, you know, the, the smart ass, uh, kind of like I am, was like, ah, oh, where's Rhea? Damien's all like, yeah, real funny punk. Uh, you know, just a little bit of the backstage drama there. And then Judgment Day uh, came out, as you can see here down below. But R-Truth also came out. And he's like, can I, can I share with y'all, you know, some things I think need changing? And Damien Priest is like, sure, sure. <laughs> he's like, it just looks right at GD. And he's like, look, man, ain't nobody like you. You got to get out. And then Damien was like laughing. And uh, then he got a little bit mad. He says, oh, look, everybody loves, everybody loves our truth. I don't love our truth. Then he gave him a, you know, clothesline, especially after he said, dude, man, you, you really got to stop calling yourself the boss. It means you're, you're a good boss, but it don't make Rhea happy. And that's when he, he just kind of like lost it. And then the Creed brothers came out. And that's the brawl that you see there. I'm really enjoying that R-Truth Judgment Day thing. I just... I love R-Truth, man. And I get to interact with him on Twitter, I'm just saying. I'm just humble brag. I get to do that. 
and he follows me, and he gets back to me. Yeah, that's right. He does. Check it on Twitter. I'm telling you. It's some good shit, man. So that was uh, really cool. And then, again. Again, again, again. Caden Carter, Katana Chance, defeated Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Hold on. Hold on. And when... Sorry, distracted. When um, R-Truth got attacked, even Wade Barrett, again, as a heel commentator, says, shouldn't be doing that. It's disrespectful. Interesting thing, again, with Wade, because had it been JBL, it would have been a little bit harsher. Or my good old friend... Well, he's not my friend, but we'll pretend. Uh, Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh, yeah. So backstage, Drew and CM Punk chat very quickly. Very quickly. They didn't attack each other. And then New Day's... Um, oh, boy. Kofi Kingston, Ricochet, Chad Gable. Yeah, it helps. Good thing I got the cheat sheet. They were chatting, welcoming CM Punk. So that's all cool. But yeah, this match here, again, we had Chelsea and Piper at ringside. I do like them. I think I think she's really good, like Chelsea at her role, at doing her scripted role. But when it's all said and done, just the in-ring technicality, the actual skill, the talent, the movesets. I've said this from day one. Hayden Carter and Katana Chance are fucking crazy good. Like, I'm talking, holy shitballs. They might actually be one of my favorite female tag teams of all time. They are that good. I'm not sin saying Indy Hartwell and Candice, Candice LeRae aren't good. I'm just being honest. I'm just going, eh, whatever. Damage control, eh, whatever. These two, oh yeah. Even Piper Niven and Chelsea, like I said, I do like, I like that whole... Dynamic again. There's that word again. Just that whole thing that they've got. You can see them right over here. And just I'm enjoying it. But I really want them, when the time is right, to have the titles and have them for like a long time. They're just so talented. It's crazy. Backstage DIY. Meet Imperium with Gunther. The Ringanal. Did I do that right? Probably not. Doesn't matter. The IY's got a mystery partner, and you know what? I figured out who it was going to be, but we'll get into that in a moment. Nia Jax tells Becky Lynch she created the man, which is true because that came about like half a decade ago when she punched her, broke her nose, the whole thing. Uh, Becky, yeah, Becky called out Nia to recount their past, right? From like 2018, 2019, Becky wanted to fight, but again, Nia walked away, and I don't like that because Nia is supposed to be this like big I don't mean bit that sounded bad I meant like big threat didn't literally mean big okay YouTube gotta be careful I want to get cancelled uh yeah just like a big threat and for her to just like walk away because she comes out she's got no fear she didn't need backup or anything didn't need a steel chair or poison mist or anything and to just walk away is so dumb. But it, it's the typical heel move. I'm just saying that I don't like that. So Imperium versus DIY. And and I knew it because there's a lot of history there. With uh, Johnny, not Johnny Gargano. Tomate, tomato, Tommaso, Ciampa. Chompy Tomato and The Miz, right? So he was the mystery partner. Really loved it. This is like really making me think that he's gone, that he's gone face Again, I really, really enjoyed the match. It was just great. I love Imperium, like, a lot, a lot, a lot. I love that faction. It's just the three of them. There isn't half a dozen of them. And I just really like the bickering between uh, Geo and, you know, Ludwig Kaiserbun. And again, the reason I call him Kaiserbun has nothing to do with his buns. No. It's because Kaiser is a type of bread. So there you have it there. You just learned something today. And then backstage, Miz did meet Imperium. Oh, we'll get we'll get into that in a moment. Backstage, Miz meets Imperium. Miz tells Gunther, you know what? I want another shot. And I like how Gunther is very, like, uncowardly. He's very, like, stoic. 
Like, he, do you know what I mean? He doesn't always need his cronies at his side. He can win clean. And that's what I like about him. He's just great. But he told him, look, I'm going to give you one more shot. But if I win, Gunther says, that's it. For as long as I'm champ, you cannot ask for another title defense again. Miz agreed. I don't know when the match is going to take place. Is it next week? Is it at the Rumble? I don't know. Rumble's like less than a month away. So that's really going to be cool. And then the end. The end was really cool. The main event, the whole Cody Rhodes thing with uh, Nakamura getting poison misted, as you could see, ended up in a disqualification. And then post-match, uh, we had uh, the Creed brothers come out to help. These guys are so good, too. Like, they're just unbelievable. Like, wow. And then, after the show, you can research it online. Cody Rhodes Eyes promo or some weird thing. And he talked about how he was having a hard time seeing out of his left eye. But he was cu cutting like a, like a promo. You know what I mean? He's not, like, really injured. And it's fucking Kool-Aid on his face. Right? How long How long has this rant been? Oh, 16 minutes. I try to keep them around the 15 minute Or quick before 18 minutes. I think it's after 18 minutes that you'll get a mid-roll ad. You don't want that. I want that because it's more money. I might make 25 bucks a month instead of 20. And there you go. Had a lot of fun. Let me know down below what you thought. Thumbs up as always if you liked the video. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. If you didn't like the video, go ahead. Give it a thumbs down. I'll bend it in half. Twist it. Give you a Samoan spike. Well, I'm not going to do it. Solo Sako is going to do it break it off in your ass and if you want to subscribe to the channel exactly do i even need to finish that sentence naturally that would be great but if not whatever thanks for stopping by anyways take care and by the way that's not bacon cooking in the frying pan it's rain falling on leaves i know winter's coming for us people in the northern hemisphere in north america but i like to hear the soothing sounds of rain not always the thunder shit that i'm playing so there is what that is. Because you'd be surprised how often I get comments like, Bro, were you like recording outside? What? Or are you cooking bacon and eggs? And like, what makes you think it sounds like bacon and eggs? Could be sausage in there too. Alright, that's enough of that. Bye for now.